Hello everybody and welcome to our Orange Business Services and Cisco Vitella webinar titled Six Steps to Successful SD-WAN Adoption. Firstly, I'd like to take you through, um, introduce you to our speakers today. We have uh, Laurent Perrin, Head of Application Driven Network at Orange Business Services. Olivia Mercier, SD-WAN Service Creation Leader at Cisco, and Jean Critcher, Head of Solution Consulting at Orange Business Services. I'd like to take you through our agenda. Um, we will start with Laurent talk, taking us through why SD-WAN. That will be followed by Olivier and Laurent talking around flexible SD-WAN. And finally, Jean will talk about the six successful steps to SD-WAN adoption and take us through some use cases. So with no further ado, I'd like to hand over to Laurent. Thank you, Katie. So I will start with the first part on why SD-WAN. I will start actually with a figure, which is, which is the following one. So actually 45% of CIOs are saying that one management complexities are still their biggest internet operational concern. So this figure was mentioned by Gartner during the latest Gartner Symposium in Barcelona last year. Actually, with the digital transformation that is now entering in a second step and strongly impacting the business of the enterprises, we see an increased usage of Internet, a wider number of new applications on the corporate network, and, a, and an acceleration and the migration to the cloud. So while the cloud technologies are simplifying the deployment of new applications, they are also complexifying the management of the network itself. So to be aligned with this cloud model, you are now expecting the network to become more agile with automated configuration and digital interfaces allowing you to change configuration in real time. And also you expect the network to be managed based on the performance of the application for the end user and not only on the availability of the infrastructure itself. So this is definitely what the SD1 technology can bring here through a software-defined model that will ensure a simplified and centralized management of the network policy, and that will also bring an intelligent routing based on the application performances. So we see definitely a strong opportunity to transform the enterprise networks with the SD1 technology to better support your digital transformation. And this trend is clearly confirmed by analysts as well, as for example, the figure that we see here on the screen from Gartner, mentioning that in 2020, 50% of the one edge refreshes will be based on SD1 technology versus 50% on traditional routers, while today it's only 5%. So this is the right time now to consider SD1. And that's why today, first, I want to summarize, uh, to summarize our course, which is that SD1 is definitely the new way of doing one in this digital work, world. And now, moving to the second step, I'm very pleased to present you a range solution, which is flexible SD1. And in this approach, how we leverage our partnership with Cisco to deliver a best of breed solution. Our value proposition is actually relying on five key pillars. SD1 expertise, global services capabilities, future proof solution, meaning that we can bring existing and future networks together, best of real security, and native cloud connectivity. And now, together with Olivier Mercier from Cisco, we will present the key differentiators that Orange and Cisco are bringing together on the market. So starting with the, with the first pillar of our solution, so the SD1 expertise. So this, uh, this, for, this, for this first part, so we, we, rely, we rely on our application performance expertise to understand and analyze your application requirements and define the right network design to support them, especially the right mix of MPLS and internet technology. To facilitate that, we are deploying open labs, new facilities in which we can simulate your application and validate the right SD1 network design to optimize the user experience. And Gene Critcher will come back to this on the latest part of the webinar to explain you how we can help you designing the right SD1 solution and validating the right designs. 
And regarding our partnership with Cisco, Cisco is definitely for us a strong and reliable SD1 partner. Together, we are working in a co-innovation mode, so working together on the development to ensure that you will benefit from the best cutting-edge technology while ensuring a full integration with our existing solutions. So now I will leave the floor to Olivier. And Olivier, could you please explain us the key assets Cisco is bringing to facilitate the SD1 technology adoption? Yes, of course, uh, Laurent. Thanks a lot. Uh, hello, everybody. So, um, yeah, the, the SD1 is uh, changing the way our customers elaborate their network. It will provide you more agility, of course, and more performances, but it also implies new components in the solution. This is not just adding internet connectivity to implement hybrid network on branch offices. SD1 relies on four main components. The first one is, as you mentioned, Laurent, um, so everything starts with application at the end. Uh, so all SD1 components recognize applications running on your network. We are able to identify standard applications and, of course, also your internal ones. The second main component is the, um, the, the network component. SD1 also means network expertise, and we combine uh, this one, the network one, with the application recognition uh, solution I mentioned just before to elaborate routing policies. Our objective is to provide more network capacity and better application quality of experience. This is why we always compare network performances and application needs in order to use the most relevant network available. The third component is security. Of course, as you open your network to internet, this is key to protect it, to protect it against various new threats. So this is a topic we'll, come, uh, we'll cover just after. And the last one is, of course, a smart dashboard. Um, and so we will provide you uh, key information on a smart web interface to have all the information uh, about your SD1 network. So this is the four main pillar. But what also is really important is the, the, the next uh, topic, which is related to uh, the, um, uh, the global uh, service. So the, the, the global service is key because your company is probably uh, not uh, present just only uh, in a country, but probably uh, worldwide on, on many uh, different countries. And thanks to the uh, OBS and Cisco partnership, we have worked together to combine our worldwide supply chain support and also expertise to provide you the best level of SLA and, uh, and support everywhere. Cisco SD1 so based on Viptela, is now fully merged into Cisco and OBS processes, which means that we are able to provide the same level of service as any other Cisco product. Thank you, Olivier. And what I would like also to highlight is that SD1 is really a game changer in the way we build and, we, and run the one services. First of all, because the management of the network will be based on the application performance and not only on the infrastructure availability, but also because with SD1, we can propose you new, new agile, agile way of working. Let me give you two examples to be more concrete. So the first one is the zero-touch provisioning approach, allowing you to deploy very, very quickly new sites, using, uh, sending you the box on site, and you can install it yourself without the need to have a field engineer from Orange on site, which will dramatically reduce the lead time to deliver new sites. Another example is the use of self-care portals, allowing you to change in real time the configuration of the network. For example, when you will need to deploy a new application for your end user. So you'll change the priorities directly on the network. So in order to be efficient with this new technology, we are, which are changing a lot the way we are working together, together with you, we have also defined a new operational model. And actually, this, this new model will combine the strength of our traditional global operational teams and the capability we have to deliver services all over the world in 220 countries and territories with teams that have high skills and strong knowledge of the customer environment. That's one side, so that's the existing operation model, but we combine it with a new SD1 operational skill center, which is composed of people who are experts in the network and IT area and are able to deep dive on the technology and to directly interface not only with your team, but also with our engineering team and with the, the, the team from Cisco, from our partner, 
to make sure that we can deliver all the new features and all the new capabilities from the solution that we have together with Cisco. And this will allow us to adapt very quickly the services and to enrich the services in a very quick manner. So a complete new way to deliver and to launch new services to meet your requirements. And these two parts, so the, 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 oper the global operational teams that we have and this new SD1 operational skills center, they will be also powered by a new generation of tools that will be available for everyone, everyone in the operational teams and that will allow them to easily analyze where the issue is coming from on the infrastructure, on the SD1 infrastructure. And this will be a simple interface, so that can be used by everyone, and that will be connected through APA, through APA with the different software components of the solution. So simple interface for the whole operational team, and then dedicated and skilled operational teams to deep dive on the SD1 solution. So to summarize, with this approach, we are able to combine the agility to deploy new SD1 services with the scalability of our existing global operational capabilities. Now let's now move to the next key pillar of the solution, which is the future proof approach. So we have designed flexible SD1 to simplify the evolution of your existing network and to ensure that your network is also ready for future requirements. Actually, we have set up SD1 gateways on our backbone to ensure that all new sites equipped with flexible SD1 will communicate with your existing MPLS site in an optimized manner. And they will also benefit from full compatibility with all the existing services. So very important to make sure that during a migration period, all users in the company will benefit from the same level of service. So concretely, this means that this will allow you to maintain different technologies in parallel and to move at your own pace. And now FlexibleSD1 is also future-proof for your network and for your requirements. Actually, thanks to a full integration with our SDN architecture, on which we have strongly invested during the last three years, you will benefit from on-demand virtualized services. Actually, we have different options to deploy these virtualized services. The first one is the universal CP, which is a new kind of box that replaces all the existing physical devices that you have today on your site, like routers, firewalls, one optimization boxes, and so on. With this new architecture based on the universal CP, you can adapt your branch office in real time to accommodate your new user requirements by adding new functions, new virtual functions on the, on the branch office without the need to change the hardware or to, to send a, a technician on site. And also, on top of the universal CP, we can complement this with another deployment option, which is based on our backbone, on which we have built SDN Pops, which provides actually a cost-effective, scalable, and highly resilient infrastructure to support your virtualized services. Now, Olivier, I have a question for you. One of the key reasons why we selected the Cisco SD1 platform is that it is easy to integrate within enterprise network, huh? because Cisco has a strong knowledge and strong expertise in the enterprise network. And so it, it ensures a full compatibility with existing services. That's a key topic. But could you please tell us a bit more on the Cisco product portfolio and roadmap on these topics? Yeah, Laurent, this is very important to, for Cisco to provide you a various choice of product running the same SD1 capabilities because needs and constraints are different if you consider a retail shop, a headquarters, or a manufacturing site. So this is the reason why we have different form factors. So um, let me uh, go into more details about that. The first one is that we already have small appliances, very easy to plug in into your, uh, your network, branch offices. And those appliances come from the uh, Viptela portfolio. So easy to plug in, easy to set up, and the second uh, option is to, uh, to run the Cisco SD1 solution natively into Cisco routers. So this is the uh, well-known ISOs many customers already have on their uh, sites, branch office and uh, headquarter and data centers. And those routers have various choice of uh, uplink technologies like T1E1, DSL, 4G. And so we can combine the support of the SD1 capabilities and the different uh, 
uh, uplinks available on those routers. So your existing routers, you're right, uh, can run Cisco SD1 features. Uh, this is just a migration of software. And finally, the last form factor is not really a form factor because this is the virtualized solution. So we can pro propose and provide virtual SD1 capabilities. So you can host this VNF uh, into a Cisco UCP. This is the, what you have mentioned before. So this is the Cisco uh, ENCS platform uh, deployed on the, on, the, on the branch office. But um, this router can host other different VNF that can be Cisco VNF, but also uh, third-party ones uh, like firewall, one optimization, and so on. The other use case for virtual SD1 software um, solution is integration into private and public cloud to extend SD1 fabric up to the cloud. But we will come back on this uh, topic uh, in the next slide. Uh, thank you, Olivier. So first of all, I, I must say that it's great to see such a wide type of capabilities, so to meet uh, the different sites requirements. And I must say, I especially like the opportunity to transform the existing water and adding the, 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 adding the, the SD1 capability on those waters because this will facilitate a lot the transition of existing networks. So let's now move to the next key pillar, which is the best of grid security. So very important topic, very major topics, because when we consider the deployment of SD1, security is definitely a key topic, as with the evolution to public cloud and the increased usage of local internet connectivity in corporate network, all of these evolutions are bringing additional challenges in the corporate network in a context where the cyber criminality is growing rapidly as well. So our security experts, so we have about 1,000 people all over the world at Orange Business Service, are able first to analyze your network, the situation of your network, the current uh, security policies that you have set up on your network, to ensure a safe SD1 deployment that will enforce your company security policies. And actually, we can do more to, to help you securing your network. First, to protect your network and user against real-time against real threats, we can include in flexible SD1 the capability to manage cloud and internet security through, through, through web-based platforms, through, through cloud-based platforms, like, for example, what we do with our partnership with Zscaler, which is fully integrated with the solution from Cisco, and we can propose something managed on an end-to-end -end basis, including the Cisco Vitella solution and the Zscaler solution. But our solution is also ready to support more complex requirements and new business workflows within your corporate network. Actually, using the capability to deploy virtualized security on site, I mentioned before the universal CP. The universal CP gives us the capability to add new security functions on your site. And this, this will help you, for example, to segment your network, to facilitate the work with partners, or to set up a virtualized security infrastructure for your IoT requirements. So, Olivier, security is a key aspect of this SD1 solution. Can you, be, can you please tell a bit more on the key functionalities that are proposed by Cisco? First, what is embedded within the, the Vitella solution and also what you can propose in the Cisco catalog? Yes, Ron. So, as we said before, Internet is no part of, the, uh, of, your, of your network, which means that we have to protect it in various ways. So the, the solution itself, the SD1 fabric, is of course fully protected by default. And so we have mechanisms to protect the fabric itself. Um, but we also propose some native segmentation features to separate your network based on applications, organizations, and so on into multiple different VPN. So this is the first uh, the first uh, solution and the first feature we have. The other one is the um, zone-based firewall uh, natively embedded in the, in the software. So we can, uh, in this way, protect branch offices against internet ag attacks. And finally, the last, um, the last thing we have is the secure connectivity we can elaborate between the, the different VHs, the fabric, the SD1 fabric, and security cloud-based solution like Zscaler, as you mentioned, but also Cisco Umbrella, to enrich protection level of the new SD1 network. 
And the, the last pillar uh, we would like to address uh, with you is the uh, native cloud connectivity. So why do we say that the, this solution is a cloud-based uh, solution? So the, uh, uh, everywhere in the, in, the, in the fabric, we are able to recognize and calculate cloud application performances to choose the best one connection to reach them. So for example, if the internet access doesn't offer you the right performance level, we can decide to use the MPLS VPN connectivity even to reach SaaS applications like Salesforce or Office 365. The other reason why we say that the solution is a, a cloud-based solution is that because we integrate SD1 virtual solution directly in your own AWS, so Amazon or Azure, cloud or even the Orange Flexible Engine environment. So thanks to this solution, your SD1 network will be extended, so securely, up to your um, cloud environment to close to your applications. Mm. Yes, indeed, Olivier. And by leveraging our application and network expertise, we can control and optimize the performance of a cloud application on an end-to-end -end basis, from the user to the cloud data center, and we can automatically select the right connectivity, internet on or MPLS, with the right performance for each cloud application. So actually, we are now integrating Cisco SD1 technology into our cloud connectivity platform to cover Flexible Engine, which is the Orange Business Services public cloud platform, but also all major infrastructure as a service and software as a service player on the market. Our network is present in more than 120 carrier hotels worldwide, which means that we can cover all major public and private, private cloud data centers. So with Flexible SD1, you will benefit from a cost-effective solution with the use of internet and optimized end-user experience when deploying a new application in the cloud. So now to, to wrap up this, uh, this presentation, we, with these key assets, Flexible SD1 will allow you to transform your network at your own pace in a fully secured approach and bring you increased agility to enable efficient digital transformation projects for your enterprise and to increase the productivity of end users with best-in-class cloud application performances. So before we move on to Jean, we just have a few questions for the audience. Um, that, as everyone votes, will hopefully give you an insight into what your peers are doing. So if I move on to the first question, um, it is, what is the preferred method to implement SD-WAN? One, a dedicated appliance based. Two, integrated in the existing CPE. Or three, universal CPE and virtual network functions. So if you just press the, the voting buttons on your screen. So I'll just read that again. What is the preferred method to implement SD-WAN? Dedicated appliance based, integrated in the CPE, or universal CPE and virtual network functions? I'll just give you a few seconds to respond to that, and hopefully you can see what your peers are responding to as well. And if I move on to the next question. How do you plan to secure your SD-WAN network? Using dedicated security platform, using cloud-based solution, or using virtual network function? Again, if you use the voting buttons on the screen. So I'll just read that again. How do you plan to secure your SD-WAN network? A, using dedicated security platform, B, using cloud-based solution, or C, using virtual network function? And again, I'll just give you a bit of time for everybody to uh, click on those. So we've got one final question um, before we move on to Jean. And the final question is, how do you consider the deployment of your new sites? So if I just open up the... So 
So how do you consider the deployment of your new site? One, through a field engineer on site. Two, through your local teams using zero touch provisioning. Or three, through your local teams using zero touch provisioning with the hotline support. So again, use the voting buttons. And I'll give you a little time to respond to that one. So how do you consider the deployment of your new site? One, through a field engineer on site. Two, through your local teams using zero touch provisioning. Or three, through your local teams using zero touch provisioning with a hotline support. Now I will move swiftly on. Thank you for, for everybody's votes, and hopefully that's been useful for you. So I will move on to um, Jean. Great. Thanks, Katie. Um, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world today. Thank you for joining. And we're on the this, this section three where I'm going to actually present some of the best practices and our, our successful steps to SD-WAN adoption. And we'll also present uh, three customer cases where we actually uh, did this and their use cases that were driving uh, the driving factors to the SD-WAN adoption. So first, on the, the next slide, you'll see a couple of bullet points as we go through, and these are the six steps that we've defined and, and we've been building rigorously for the last year because we, we know that SD-WAN is a new technology. People are still getting educated on it. Um, when we talk to customers today, they, they know relatively more or less what it does. Um, a lot of good marketing is around it. Um, but it, there is some impacts on, on this, and, and good and, and, and also a challenging, which is about organizational change for for our customers today, which is what we see is that how they use the classic uh, network and demand management processes are not going to be the same. Um, other things like applications uh, are going to be more critical to monitor. Um, so therefore, you're going to move from your classic uh, network quality of service, class of service approach to more a application routing policy and user experience level. And this means uh, you need to have the right people to be able to address that, to have the enough information to be able to understand what's happening. So this is part of that education process that we, we build into the engagement with, with you or with the, with the customers today. Um, additionally, um, we have a second step which is also very important. Um, it's defining the SD-WAN validation and performance uh, adoption approach. Oops, we have a, another issue with the slide. Apologies for that. Let me just make sure I got that. There we go. So this is a critical to know. Uh, what is going to be the best validation and adoption approach? Why? Because again, when you're changing from the MPLS network uh, into SD-WAN network, um, it, will in, in, it will involve how do you map what you're doing already on the MPLS network to what we'll be adopting into SD-WAN. There are some uh, capabilities that can be easily cut and paste, and, and we see this that we have certain types of site profiles that we can uh, implement and it can easily be uh, adopted into, uh, say, Cisco Viptela technology. But in some customer sites, uh, the headquarters uh, or, or very complex topologies, we're seeing that you have to do a little more study on how to do the transformation. And we have a way, and we're going to talk about the SD-WAN journey in the next line, which will then indicate you know, how we take this approach with our customers today. But before we get there, we're going to go to the third step, which is important as well, and I think it is the most critical out of these steps. It's the due diligence phase where you're doing all the gathering of information, data about your stakeholders, the end user expectations, the application landscapes, the security policies, um, is a conversion to virtual services on what types of infrastructure you want to do this. Um, and all this has to be put together um, so that we can uh, do this quickly for you. We can actually work more faster and in the deployment and the experience around the SD-WAN. And this takes probably the longest out of these steps um, to do because it, it means uh, some discussions with different people in the organization, the security officer, uh, uh, the person owning the IT infrastructure, the business users or the application owners, um, just so that we have the context uh, of how this would work. Once we get all this information, 
We obviously are already working today with Cisco very closely. In fact, on all these SD-WAN uh, adoptions and journeys we've been doing, Cisco has been with us uh, on all of them because there is a moment where we would look at some of these requirements and we would say, okay, this is going to be a specialized requirement. We need to do a co-innovation, co-development. That's what Lohan was talking about earlier in, in the slide presentation. And this means doing some development to answer to this need. So because we know the, the, the technology is maturing and we will have some specialized circumstances circumstances um, that will happen. We also see that when we're doing some of the SD-WAN designs, there's no one vanilla uh, design that suits everybody and, and no one configuration that suits everybody. We've probably done about a dozen of these, if not more, where we see the, the, the engagement and how we collect information or what we learn through the process comes at different phases, and then we see that it's not always the same uh, requests uh, from every single customer. So we do have a, a few of the top ten, I guess you could say, um, and we, we build these into use cases. So this is important because we do define the use cases. It's important when we have the education with you and also when you're learning how SD-WAN is going to uh, work for you and in what context of the business side, we need to define these use cases. And then we need to build some required documentation, very simple uh, documents that we we pull together a test plan, um, maybe a scope of work because we might be having some interlocks with some other third parties. Um, we also will do a migration plan if you're going to actually migrate from existing ex infrastructure in place, existing uh, connectivity. Uh, we build also um, a, a knowledge of all the applications, uh, and then we input that and put it together into uh, a requirements document, and then we execute on that. Um, so it's very important to, to have all this information, and especially we mentioned some things about APIs. I think another lesson learned we've had through the process is that API integration is really critical, and there will be some specific tools, legacy tools on your side that we'll need to understand that may need to have some integration or some plugins. And that's going to be something we collect as part of the due diligence, but it needs to be documented, and then we need to make sure we've got a, a plan around it and how we will test it. And then after we've done all of that on the use cases and then building the, the, the documentation, it's then about setting expectations on deployment and timings. Now, we talked a lot about the agility, you know, turning sites up fast, and in the context of small sites um, that are fairly straightforward, not a lot of complexity, not a lot of uh, application, the difficult applications that have performance uh, demand, yeah, this, this definitely happens. And, and in other cases, we have very complex uh, sites or we have sites in, in exotic countries where we need to make sure we've got the connectivity in place. And this is something we've had a lot of experience doing, by the way. Out of all the SD-WAN uh, journeys, uh, we've been doing most of, of the deployments in difficult countries. And I will make reference to some of these in these uh, three customer cases that I'm going to show you in, in just a moment. I talked about the SD-WAN adoption process and now the journey with us. So it, on the screen now you're going to see a, a detailed a, a, a slide. And it's, it's important to show this because I want you to be aware that we have this process defined and have been putting it and, and, and developing it and establishing it for almost a year now. Um, obviously, from our standpoint, we want you to understand what we can do. You heard earlier today what our value prop is, what our offering is, co-built with, with Cisco. We have a demonstration we, we, have, um, we can put in place. We then turn this into a workshop mode with you because we want to understand what are your important uh, requirements. And then those use cases, site profile information, all of this has to be sketched put together and then scoped so that we know this is what you're expecting from the SD-WAN service. Now, in terms of the experience or the adoption, that journey also includes three different types of I guess, executions or a way you can execute using SD-WAN. We have an open lab, which Laurent has referenced earlier in the presentation, which we've co-built with Cisco, and we have this all presented with a prototype solution of our actual service. We have a standard menu of, t of use cases with functional tests, and it's prepackaged, and you can do this over a couple of days. 
But then we also get requests for customized uh, open labs where we may need at, be asked to simulate some specific application environments or some specific multiple VPN environments. Um, and this can be done on a customized level in the open lab um, and built in a longer uh, stream of three or four days in, the, in that case. Um, on the on-prem uh, pox is what we're doing also. Um, in, this, in this element, this is more about testing the technology but with potentially some live traffic with the customer. Now, yes, there is some potential risk with it. Um, we build migration strategy plans, failover continuity plans because we're not going to be um, sitting there and just uh, implementing the technology and not to expecting that there could be a risk of something happening. But we have done these quite often with, the, with our customers, a good three or four of them in the last year um, because they want to experience the technology in action. And, and we've done it with that mechanism of, of, uh, of making sure that we, we do it in and, and the right time frames as well as within a, a testing environment um, so that there is no business disruption. The other mode and the one that we see quite often is the pilot, and that means you're testing the Orange service itself. And this is one we're doing quite, with quite a few customers now um, where they're either taking a different type of approach of, of using existing infrastructure or its new sites, um, or there may be some existing providers, and they want to pilot the service with us. So this is really a live environment. It's using our operations teams. You're going to see uh, Orange in action on the whole build and run of this. And they're lasting typically a, a couple of months, um, and then there is a decision, the factor of what's the next step. In this case, if, if everything was a go, it was in line with expectations, then we're in a full rollout mode. Okay? And this is, this is something, again, it's very important that we establish these types of different testing, the open lab, the on-customer the on premise POX, the pilots, because this is a, a part of that validation and adoption approach that I mentioned in the six steps um, to successful SD-WAN adoption. Um, I'm going to talk about three customers. Uh, the first one I think we've seen a bit in, already on the press release out there, but I, I think it's important that you, you, you get the context of, of working with one of our largest customers um, who's been with us many years, um, and we've had a, a, a very good interaction with them uh, through this journey, which started more than two years ago, where they indicated they had an ambition, they wanted to, um, to reduce the costs on the WAN by 50%. 2020 was the deadline for that. They knew they were going to move to full Internet, SDN, and they knew that they, had, they were going to have bandwidth growth. And this is a common uh, request with almost all the customers we see. We're going to ex explode on bandwidth, and we need to be able to manage it. Data has to be managed. And they want to have that future-proof uh, next-gen um, type of network with that was referenced that we, we are working and have part of our offer today. So they looked at this and saying, we're moving to cloud, we're moving everything to cloud, we're getting rid of data centers, we're going to go full wireless, and we're going to use our own devices, bring your own device, enter those things. This is a full ambition, but it has to have the security and performance as, as a particular requirement, the customer was very, very clear. They do not want to see a change of what they have been getting in security and performance when they make this change. So with taking these all in mind, using the, the journey, using the best, uh, the six steps of uh, successful adoption, we built the required documentation based on those requirements. We built it into an open lab so they could see the technology in action. And the, the, the customers that we were involved with, or at least they're, they're the organization in Siemens that we were talking to was much more on the service management side. So they were very technical people, so, but they still needed to see how you know, we, we, they could use this, how they could adopt this. So that was with the open lab technology, and they also wanted to do a comparison. It wasn't just Cisco at the, at the, at the end result. It was, but in the beginning, they wanted to compare Juniper and Cisco, which we did. In the end, they did choose Vitella and the SD-WAN and also the NCS Universal CPE. And we are in the process right now deploying the first sites of the pilot. Um, and what we're doing is that on each site, we, are, we have to migrate what we call from a brownfield approach. It means it's existing MPLS migrating to Internet. There will be profiles specific to these sites. They have been classed in a specific table. And then we're seeing how this is being adopted with the path selection policies that are being put in place. And this is what, the, what we are expected to do so that we have a, uh, a setting of what it's going to look like when we move to the full rollout, which is at 1,500 plus sites. Okay? The other part was about putting these services into 
uh, uh, universal CPE. This is also an evolutionary phase of the journey with them. We will be adopting uh, optimization. We'll be adopting wireless. We'll be adopting a, a security as VNFs on universal CPE and leveraging the Viptela SD-WAN uh, as part of the VNF on the universal CPE. And all of this, again, using all the Orange infrastructure, the hosted POPs, our management tools in the cloud, everything is provided by Orange. At the end, the expectations, the benefits, obviously, will be they're validating those use cases, those challenges that they would expect that we will meet with them through this journey to 2020. The service model itself has to have a compliance to the SLAs and the service management requirements. We had the structure approach put in place because we knew the complexity of this network uh, was going to be very difficult uh, to make the change. But because we have done all those six steps and working on, with the customer with Cisco, we are seeing the, the minimal risks right now that we could potentially have seen uh, if we had not done all that work up front. And therefore, realizing what the customer should expect by 2020, um, as mentioned in, these, uh, in the challenges here. So that's a brownfield approach. Now, we are working with a customer right now doing a greenfield approach. This is a global beverage maker. We actually started the journey with them similarly to what I had uh, done with, uh, with Siemens, except the big difference is uh, we have now done a, an on-prem proof of concept. We, we literally took two sites of the customer and we deployed the VH devices with a broadband access and we ran a joint developed test plan and they wanted to see the technology in action. As I mentioned, this is why you do on-prem proof of concepts. You wanted to see it in action. Now, what's very important to take away from this experience is that this was a customer who did not want any risk of business continuity or service disruption. So they decided to procure the Internet fresh at two other sites, and this was done without any other business traffic moving through it. It was just running some basic traffic between the two sites. Okay? And so that was a change from what we've experienced with some other customers who absolutely were okay with using ex existing connectivity, though it, is, it does introduce a very uh, a, a different level of risk by doing that. And as a result, the, the technology was in line with the expectation. It, it showed the agility. It showed the fast deployment. Um, and it showed that they could use cloud. They were a big uh, AWS and Azure u users, and they knew that the local breakout was going to be a possibility. They still have the security element, which is always important for them, and that's part of all their IT initiatives is, is making sure they have a security governance for everything. Um, but one of the things that's a key business driver for this customer is about the acquisitions they're making of their competition in some of these very exotic countries. I mentioned this earlier in my, in my uh, previous previous slides where we're working with customers deploying pilots in exotic countries. This is one of them now where we're deploying 10 sites and all of the sites except one is in Southeast Asia. And they're in some very difficult countries to, to get, uh, usually, usually to get uh, importation and or the connectivity, a lot of regulatory, but we are making it work, making it happen, because we have that experience already of doing it with, with customers on our own MPLS network. So this is one of the, the plus points. But at the same time, the distance factor between those Asia-Pacific sites and the, and the headquarter sites in Europe, uh, we, we know that we have to test to make sure the path selections are going to be right, and we're doing that now, and we have about nine of the ten sites um, already deployed, and we're starting just now to get all the SD-WAN um, uh, configurations put in place. The interesting part, though, is that the new sites need to contact to the existing sites, and the existing sites are actually on BT um, as the underlay provider and their MPLS network. So we have built a data center, uh, or we built actually within their data center in Europe, uh, a gateway so that there is a communication between the new sites and the existing MPLS sites. So this is, again, a greenfield approach. It's not using the entire um, orange uh, pops or gateways, but it is showing that we can build this uh, with the customer and still have a connectivity communication with existing sites as the transformation transition is happening. So again, coming back to the benefits, we have new site deployments, the agility, we really have to make sure the performance is maintained, security is maintained, 
they want to centralize policy management on the routing so that all the sites are mapped into what the SD-WAN policy has been built. And again, through the access level and the bandwidth requirements that they have, they are using Internet now instead of MPLS, that they are going to expect to see some cost optimization, obviously, as they move toward that. So this is a greenfield approach. The last case that I'm going to show you is about a pure overlay integrator. Now, we are experiencing now with a customer, a chemical manufacturer, who has decided in their own uh, policy for um, uh, their, their business and for their IT that they want to have more um, their regional, interregional type of, of communication, meaning that their underlay providers will not be always the same as the overlay providers. And they made that decision very, very uh, clearly that they wanted to have a different provider for the regions. So with that, they, know, they knew they wanted to have something that was interoperable with MPLS, they wanted to have a fit-for-purpose technology. They were a big Cisco shop. They wanted to make sure things could work. And, of course, the video and voice uh, part of it was important as part of their business, as one of their business applications, really, to make sure that they have a necessity of communication uh, working at all, at all times. So we started with the customer uh, with the test in our open lab. We did a very uh, two-day uh, short overview. There were a few minor uh, use case requirements that were customized, but they were ones that we could easily put in place for a two-day uh, overview. And then we're now in the process of rolling out for a 20-site pilot, which has to run for about three months. And this is going to help further define uh, the design and transformation process because they are moving and shifting away from a single provider to multiple providers. And then Orange is going to be providing the full overlay to more than 900 sites with those third-party underlay providers uh, still in, in place in the, in the other regions. So it it's truly is a multi-source service integration approach where we are doing the contract management with the providers and the infrastructure management. We're using our service management capabilities Abilities and our tools and our processes, integrating that with uh, the new environment that's being deployed. So because of this journey and because of doing it with the customer uh, very early in the stages, um, the, their expectation is now they're going to have this future-proof network. They will have the ability to deploy universal CPE at some point, and they will be, by the way, that's first starting with the SD-WAN, and then will converge to uh, virtualized functions. But the most important was with this customer as being an overlay provider with the service management capabilities and being able to meet the SLAs of the demand of operations, their IT, coherency on service delivery, and support. So I just gave you three examples. Uh, brownfield, greenfield, overlay, all of them had some particular differences of use case needs, but all of them had a, a starting point through the SD-WAN journey that I referenced prior. So I think we have some questions to ask to the audience, right, Katie? Yep. Hi. So the um, the first question we've got is, what is the preferred method to start your SD WAN adoption? One, a technology proof of concept in a lab environment. Two, a technology proof of concept on a live production site. Or three, as a pilot service from a service provider or integrator. So again, you should see the votes at the bottom of the screen. I'll just read it quickly again. What is the preferred method to start your SD WAN adoption? One, a technology proof of concept in a lab environment. Two, a technology proof of concept on live production sites. Or three, as a pilot service from a service provider or integrator. And if we move on to the next question. How important are SD-WAN monitoring and reporting as one of your requirements? One, critical. Two, high. Three, medium. Or four, unnecessary. So again, how important are SD-WAN monitoring and reporting as one of your requirements? Critical, high, medium, or unnecessary? And then I think we've got one more question.
what type of SD-WAN service model will you expect to implement? One fully managed, fully outsourced underlay and overlay to providers. Two co-managed, shared management with underlay and overlay providers. Or three, do it yourself. Overlay and underlay fully managed in-house. And that brings us to the end of the webinar. We do have one question from the audience, um, which I will read out. Um, the question is, regarding on-demand services, do you support specific VNF, including Cisco, native, and third-party VNFs, detailed features like zone firewalling through your customer portal? Um, and Laurent, did you want to take that question? Yes, sure. So, yeah, indeed, we propose a, a catalog of VNF, virtual network functions. Uh, these include functions proposed by Cisco in the, so the SD1, the security area, but it also covers uh, third-party uh, VNF. So, right now, the, 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 the key features that we can propose are security, security functions. So, it includes zone-based firewall, but also uh, more advanced features like URL filtering, application firewall, and so on. So we have uh, different uh, different vendors in the catalog, like Fortinet, like uh, like Palo Alto. We also propose uh, one optimization function uh, that uh, that are complementing the, the SD1 and allowing to to accelerate some of the specific uh, traffics uh, and optimize the performance for some of the traffic. And on top of that, we are we are developing. So for each of the functions, we are proposing different vendors. Huh? Uh, different vendors uh, set up two or three vendors who are the leaders on the market. And we are also developing new uh, new functions, integrating new functions. Like right now, we are we are testing uh, different vendors for the uh, the SBC uh, ESBC functions. And we are also integrating testing some functions for uh, to, faci to, to facilitate the, the wireless LAN uh, management, wireless LAN controllers that we can virtualize on the universal CP instead of having a dedicated uh, dedicated uh, server or appliance on the on the site. So so this is a, this is a very important area for us. So we are investing a lot in this, proposing these functions ever on the universal CP to have them directly delivered on site. But also, uh, we are able to, to host them within our network, so in our SDN POPs, which is, uh, as I mentioned previously in the presentation, also quite cost-effective approach because it's based on a fully shared environment. That's great. Thank you very much. And uh, we have one more question that's just come in. Um, is SD-WAN adapted to transport voice traffic? So yes, so this is this uh, <laughs> on this question. So the voice traffic can be can be carried over SD1. We we can propose as for any of any applications. We we can propose different uh, different kind of approach for uh, for the voice traffic. Uh, uh, SD1 can mix different uh, technologies, so MPLS and internet. So depending on the the criticality of uh, of the voice traffic and the quality of the voice. Uh, we would recommend to use uh, to to keep MPLS uh, MPLS capacity to 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 run the voice traffic, especially depending on the geographical area. But this is also possible to use uh, internet connection and to use the the dynamic routing on the internet connection to optimize the voice traffic. So we have a set of options uh, that will be, let's say. Uh, cost-effective and adapted to, 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 to the kind of usage that you have for the voice in your enterprise, maybe uh, differentiating the internal voice call and, uh, and the most uh, critical calls that you have within your call centers or with your customers. But it's definitely part of the traffic that we can manage as part of the SD-1 solution. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of our webinar. Thank you to everybody for joining. And please don't hesitate to uh, contact us if you do have any further queries or questions on this. Thank you very much, and goodbye.